Combining the best of daily fantasy and survivor pools, Stat Hero is the next chapter in fantasy sports. No more competing with the Sharks or experts ever, because your only competition is Stat Hero itself. The face of DFS has changed. Finally, a game designed for the rest of us. Hey, what's going on? Jeff Ratcliffe here. It's week 11 fantasy football. And you know, a big part of success in fantasy football is going beyond the box score, not just looking at the basic stats, but looking at what other numbers are telling you as well, because you can often get a lot of insights that just aren't present in the box score. So that's what we, of course, do for you over at PFF. And every week on this video, we break down five stats that you need to know. So let's dive into them. Five stats you need to know for Week 11 fantasy football. Let's start with Dak Prescott. Obviously a big performance last week. We saw a little bit of a lull from him in the middle part of the season after that hot start as well. But here's an interesting stat on Dak. So far this season, he has nine passing scores on deep ball throws. Now a deep ball throw at PFF is any ball that travels at least 20 yards in the air. That is tied for the league lead with Patrick Mahomes, of course. But this certainly says something about Dak Prescott. I mean, heading into the season, we said, hey, he's a low upside guy. He has a decent floor because he's able to run the football. But generally speaking, he's not going to do that much with his arm. Well, he has certainly made some progress in that area. And hey, having Amari Cooper, having Michael Gallup, and Randall Cobb as well at his disposal, certainly good for Dak's upside. He's going to continue to be an upside quarterback going forward for us here. But let's take that same stat and let's look on the other side, a guy without upside, unfortunately, because of that stat, Jimmy Garoppolo. So far this season, only 8.1% of his throws have traveled at least 20 yards in the air. So 8.1% deep ball percentage. That's the second lowest in the league. And the problem here is with those dinks and dunks, sure, you can have a high completion percentage, but you're really not going to bring a lot of big play ability to the table. And of course, I do like Jimmy G as a streamer this week. Don't get me wrong. We already saw him perform well in that matchup earlier in the season, only a few weeks ago. But to be clear, not a ton of juice here for fantasy purposes because the, the upside is lacking. Getting Emmanuel Sanders in that offense certainly has helped Jimmy G, but it hasn't raised that number. So not a lot of big play upside there with Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's go to the third stat for you. Let's talk a little Leonard Fournette. Underappreciated perhaps this year. And I get it, after last year, a lot of people were down on Fournette. But so far this year, 3.75 yards after contact per attempt. That is the third highest in the league. That is a great number there for Fournette because he's not only getting the volume, he's a three down back. They're using him both in early down and passing down situations, but he's been very efficient with his carries. Now Fournette, not the sexiest running back out there. He's not Christian McCaffrey. We get it. But a lot of times you just need a guy who's going to touch the ball a bunch and be relatively efficient with those touches. That is very much Fournette this season. You could certainly view him as a top 10 guy going forward, and he might even be better than that. If this volume continues, Nick Foles gives you some stability under center in that offense. Leonard Fournette shaping up to be an RB1, a big, big time bounce back guy after last year's disappointing season. All right, let's keep with the running back position and talk about Josh Jacobs. Did you realize Josh Jacobs has as many runs of 15 plus yards as Christian McCaffrey? It's true, 11 of them for each of these guys. And hey, Oakland, they are feeding this rookie running back with carries this season, and he's doing a lot with them. He's making defenders miss. He's generating extra yards after contact, and he's showing some big play upside as well. You have to love that for Josh Jacobs. Of course, you also have to love his matchup this week. Cincinnati, yes, please. Josh Jacobs, obviously an upgrade in all fantasy formats, and he's got a lot of fantasy juice with the big play upside and the ability to make defenders miss. All right, let's round it out here. Fifth stat, let's talk a little bit of Melvin Gordon. Do you realize that since week seven, he is second in the league in goal line carries? Only Dalvin Cook has more. Melvin Gordon has seven goal line carries since returning to the field for the Los Angeles Chargers, and these are important carries because, hey, you have your highest percentage chance of scoring a touchdown when you touch the ball closer to the end zone. That's just the way it is. These are high percentage touches for Melvin Gordon. And we saw the Chargers give a few of these touches to Austin Eckler. They didn't work so well. So the fact that Gordon is getting them bodes positively. This week, he faces the Chiefs. It's not a bad matchup for Melvin Gordon. And of course, if they get down into the red zone, and especially the goal line region, you can expect Gordon to see plenty of touches. 
You want more stats than just five, though. I know that. Of course, we have you covered with stats galore for football purposes. Lots of great content, including some NFL draft content already. Hey, it's November. The draft isn't that far away. We also have you covered on the fantasy front. Rankings, projections, content galore. All of that, of course. Check us out over at PFF.com. Thanks for watching the PFF YouTube channel. And if you want to subscribe, all you have to do is push the button. Don't forget everything you get. A little fantasy, push the button. A little green line for the gambling aspects of the game, push the button. College football, push the button. The YouTube channel from PFF.